everyone, this is Sarah Chan Svalings. Welcome to another episode of Billion Dollar Moves, where it is my job to deconstruct the billion dollar moves of some of the top founders and funders in the US and Asia venture ecosystem. What got them from their journey of underestimated to iconic in the most raw and unfiltered form. You won't get this anywhere else. Today, you're tuning in to my quick take of our episode with Lu Tang of Fusion Fund, material scientist turned unicorn backer. And we cover a few things. Number one, rising from insecurity. Number two, making your differentiation your unique advantage. And number three, the future of healthcare, the future of deep tech that Lu Tang is excited by. As always, I would urge you to feel compelled to actually go to the full episode after you tune in to a little bit of this because there are things that I might miss that you would catch. And of course, like a movie, everyone has a different perspective and that's what you would take from it. Uh, but this is a quick cliff notes. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. Hey, it's Sarah. And as some of you may know, Billion Dollar Moves is proud to now be a part of the creators program at the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. That means we have access to tons of new resources like editors and marketers that help us continue to create high quality episodes and grow our community. We're also in good company with podcasts like Another Bite, hosted by John Dick, Joey Monroe, Leslie Green, and Ariel Boswell. Each week, they break down episodes of everyone's favorite business TV show, Shark Tank, offering their own unique thoughts, spin off companies, critiques, and even talk with some of the folks who pitch to the sharks and live to tell the tale. From squatty potties to mention on a bench and even that weird golf club you pee into, Another Bite takes a fresh look at some of your favorite episodes and even more importantly, answers what these entrepreneurs are up to now. Check out the shows and learn more about HubSpot creators at hubspot.com creators and listen to Another Bite wherever you get your podcasts. Takeaway 1. Rising from insecurity by being laser focused on the end goal. You know what really surprised me about this episode with Lu Tang was despite her being a friend of mine, I only realized that she still feels like a failure every day. This from a woman who's been on an accelerated path as a material science engineer from one of the best universities in the world, Stanford, commercializing that technology for uh, type 2 diabetes and selling it to Boston Scientific for quite a bit of money, started angel investing, got into really good deals, and then building a fund that was close to 100 million by the age of 30. And yet, what really moves her forward is the fact that she says, you know, I don't have the time to think about this. I have so many challenges ahead of me and I keep moving forward. She doesn't care whether the choice that she's making is the popular choice or not. It's whether she herself believes that this is her passion, this will make an impact in the world, and she, you know, moves ahead from there. So tune into this. They're like, oh, that's a great technology. Have you think about making a real company? I'm like, sure, why not? I think that's a part of my personality. You could call it simple and naive being too young, but on the other side, also pretty bold. I don't really care about whether it's the choice most of people will choose. As long as I found it super exciting and passion and could drive impact and that working on the technology I love, I will do it. To be honest, I also did not realize how hard it is. <laughs> when I started as a solo founder, as I said, I was still doing my research at Stanford and in parallel, oh my God, I have really no life. I feel grateful if I found time to eat, to have dinner around, like the only meal around 8 p.m., 9 p.m. I still remember the restaurant owner, she still recognized me because she also saw me, okay, this is a girl, very young girl came in 8 p.m., 9 p.m. and all the bunch of food to eat by herself seemed pretty happy. Sounds, look pretty weird, right? Initially, she was always checking on me, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm totally fine. Thank you for still open with great food. So that's how busy I was. Not to mention no time for social, no time for sleep, no party, no travel, nothing at all. And I even don't have time to think about how miserable my life was because it's just so busy. Every day there's so many different yeah. things I need to work on. And also it's all about, you know, sometimes uh, getting people supporting me, but most of the time, lots of people give me challenges, discrimination, everything. I also need to prepare myself the following day to be ready continue my journey. Lesson number two, how you can make your differentiation your unique advantage and PS never take rejection personally. It's all part of the process. So one of the key challenges that we're up against in the work we're doing in Beyond the Villain is the fact that a lot of things are structural, right? So one of the issues in why women don't get enough funding uh, less than 3% of venture capital funding goes to female founders even today in 2022 is the fact that the fund managers themselves that would likely invest into female founders are not being robustly funded, right? They're called emerging managers, fund managers that may not have the track record of 10 years, so on and so forth. And the challenge with this is being different from the perceived pattern of success 
means that you may not even qualify for the capital that you're looking for. This is how you turn things around. Yeah, I think probably the one thing I want to go back to tell tell the younger Lou uh, back in the days is really first and never take it personal because there are, there are so many people say no to me. Uh, I cannot uncheck all the box. Like 20, 21 years old, female minority immigrant founder working on healthcare. <laughs> the experience I had by launching the first one is really once you have a strong differentiation, it's much easier to raise money from the LP even for the first time. Because for lots of the investor, what they're looking for Yes, they want a manager with better performance, but when you just get started, you have no track record. So how to position your differentiation is very important. And for me, I think first of my differentiations really came from who I am, like my background, my past experience, my focus on deep tech and healthcare. To be honest with you, choosing deep tech and healthcare as a major focus back in 2015 was not an easy decision. While most of other VC are now doing that, you are being one of the few doing certain choosing certain direction to invest and meanwhile need to have a comprehensive investment methodology to support it let's come to the second point i want to suggest to the young manager is need to have a consistent investment methodology especially when you don't have lots of track record strong methodology with the logic will make it much easier to persuade investor and lp trust you and understand and align their interest with you and meanwhile you know not not like you could raise money from everyone. There'll always be capital that could fit with you, capital that's not good fit with you. But when you have clear methodology, you could quickly make that filtering. Like people thought, oh, this is your approach. This is how you look at company industry opportunity. Highlight number three. So not a lesson because there's way too much into this to read into, but the key highlight here is digital transformation has been rapidly accelerated through the pandemic. And a lot of the innovations that you and I are looking for are already here being built by some of the amazing underestimated founders that you need to keep your eyes peeled for. You know, I love geeking out about everything tech, in particular where it has to do with the human life and healthcare being the core incentive to that. We talked a little bit in this episode about the triple A problem, accuracy, accessibility, and affordability in healthcare, and how particularly AlphaFold, a new database that has been released, reveals 200 million structures in a database of protein structures which will accelerate scientific research in a significant way. You know, this was the kind of stuff that I was looking at when I was working as a corporate VC, looking at late stage biotech companies, and I can tell you it will be a game changer and continues to be. Listen to Lou. Now we have this free database with over 200 million protein folding structure available for free for everyone, especially for people in the digital biology. It's a huge, huge improvement, a huge, huge acceleration. So that's super exciting. So that's kind of the future of the general healthcare within the digital application. And meanwhile, if you look at the healthcare industry in general, we always have this triple A problem, accessibility, affordable, and accuracy. And how to solve the triple A problem? Applying AI and make it digital and uh, apply AI using it to improve the efficiency. So that's the healthcare side. But for other industry, same situation, you know, how we really improve the efficiency by push for digital transformation. Definitely on the data side, there's lots of vertical AI application. But meanwhile, on the hardware side, uh, for example, there's a new sensing technology, sensor, flexible electronics, make it possible for us to continue subtracting data with low power consumption. That's the data entrance. And the second stage is data transfer. We invest a lot in edge computing, next generation cloud infrastructure, data privacy, really enable the traditional sector who does not have a huge comp computing power on the cloud. It could still enable the edge uh, device to have computing power. And we're seeing in the past two years, not only just the tech industry, logistic, manufacturing, insurance, pharmaceutical, life science and also uh, chemical industry, all this traditional sector food industry are adopting digital transformation solution. Yeah, that's the future. When was the last time you heard someone say it's almost too easy when talking about a piece of tech? Probably never, right? Because tech usually isn't easy. Tech is usually too complicated, too busy, too frustrating when it should be just plain easy. HubSpot CRM platform is ridiculously easy to learn and love. That's because it's a handcrafted, sophisticated system designed for the way teams actually work, not a bunch of cobbled together tools that don't speak to each other. With a suite of powerful tools that seamlessly connects your teams and customizable hubs that you can add or subtract as you grow, 
It's not almost too easy to use, it's easy to use, period. Learn how HubSpot can help your business grow better at HubSpot.com. All right, final one, bonus takeaway for the parents, and I know many of you tuning in. What your kids read and consume matters. You become what you can see. And listen to this. You know, I wondered in this conversation how a child from Inner Mongolia who never had any exposure to entrepreneurship, let alone material science, had aspirations to become a material science engineer. And you know what Lou told me? She said that she once read when she was a little girl this science fiction book about how the universe could be connected by an escalator from the earth to the moon. So as a child, she was thinking hard about what kind of materials will it take to have that kind of impact? I mean, come on. There's an interesting story that when I was a little, I remember I read a book and the cover page is a universe elevator. So the elevator connecting the earth and the moon. It's kind of science fiction, but they were talking about if we have the strongest material in the world, like carbon nanotube, in theory, it will be the strongest material in the whole world. We could build that such a elevator. So that's become almost like a small seed planting in my heart. I'm like, okay, I want to do something as great as that. And how could I contribute? That's the reason eventually pushed me to make the decision to choose material science as a major. All right, there you have it. My key takeaways from the episode with Lu Zhang, material scientist turned unicorn backer. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on what I missed. Uh, whether you had a different perspective to what she said from the episode, which of course is in the show notes below. And I highly recommend that you view the full thing and let me know, comment below. Uh, but in the meantime, keep rising from your insecurity, keep using your differentiation as a unique advantage and keep looking forward and making billion dollar moves. I'm your host, Sarah Chen Spellings, and I'll see you next week. And thanks so much for tuning in this week. You can subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and follow our socials on Sarah Chen Global to get the latest on the show. It would really help me out too if you enjoyed this to rate and review our show on Apple Podcasts and share your favorite episodes with friends. I'm Sarah Chen Spellings and you've been listening to Billion Dollar Moves.